Good morning, good afternoon, hello and welcome to my YouTube channel Unwind and Knit With Me. My name is Lisa and I'm coming to you from Christchurch, um, which is the South Island of New Zealand, where I live with my husband and my daughter. And this is my little part of the world where I talk about my knitting, my yarn, my finished objects, my works in progress, all things about yarn um, and my knitting. So welcome if you are a first time viewer, welcome and please subscribe to my channel. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I hope you're enjoying the content. You can follow me on Instagram as Unwind and Knit With Me. But uh, recently we've set up a Facebook community page, which is getting um, quite a lot of followers now. And that's, I'm really happy, um, really happy with the way that's panning out. Uh, where a lot of you are posting your projects and your yarns and chatting amongst um, each other and getting tips and advice off each other. So that's Unwind to Knit With Me and it's a community page. Um, and you are required to answer three questions and then a moderator will um, approve your application to join the page. And those questions are just, what is your fibre craft? How did you hear of us? And do you agree to the terms and the conditions of, um, of that Facebook page? So if you haven't already come over and joined us um, there, please do. Um, that would be really good. So yeah, Facebook. Instagram and of course my YouTube channel so like I said if you haven't yet subscribed please um, just hit the subscribe button down below and I hope you have your knitting and maybe a cup of tea or coffee and you can sit back and enjoy the next probably probably about one hour um, with me I will talk about um, what I'm wearing and some finished objects and some works in progress. Then I will also, we have two giveaways that I have drawn um, two lucky winners for a mystery pack of Jameson and Smith Shetland wool. Um, and we will also do, I've got another two to give away, which we will run over the next couple of weeks and I'll draw them again before my next podcast. So my pod podcasts are normally every two to three weeks, depending on how much life gets in the way. Um, so there was a bit of a break last time. If you watched my last episode, you would have heard that both my husband and I got COVID. Um, we have, well, I've recovered really well. And I've got to say, I think I've got a fairly mild dose, which is good. Um, but I think he's still struggling a little bit. He's got headaches still after about three weeks. So that's a bit of a worry. Um, I must say today too, it's Thursday, the 22nd of September, 2022. And it's my husband's birthday. So I know he doesn't watch my podcast. Maybe he does sometimes on the side. I don't know, but happy birthday, honey. Hope you have a good day. And um, we're actually off to Auckland tomorrow. So that's exciting, a weekend in Auckland. And I'm sure a lot of my viewers will probably appreciate this. Um, the accommodation was booked about two years ago and it got booked, cancelled, booked, cancelled, booked, cancelled because of COVID. So um, two years down the track, we're finally getting to um, go to Auckland for the weekend. Um, and use up this accommodation that we've had in credit. Uh, we will be going to a rugby match, an All Blacks Australia rugby game. So that is always good. And we're going to go out for dinner and it should be just a really nice weekend in Auckland. I don't know if I'll get into any yarn shops. I do normally visit Lupine, which is quite central to the city. Beautiful wee uh, yarn shop in Auckland. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to get to any. I don't need to. I've got all this. <laughs> but who knows? Never say never. Um, also thought too, I really can't proceed any further without saying um, or giving a mention to our poor beloved queen that passed away. Um, we've just pretty well finished 10 days of, did they call it national mourning? And I was one of the four billion that sat up till after midnight watching the funeral and um, yeah it was really sad really really sad and I suppose for me like all of us she was just a consistent presence throughout our whole life 
and I don't know, it's what I said to my daughter, I don't know that you'll ever get that again. Like in her lifetime, there'll probably be another two kings. Um, so yeah, that was really sad. Um, but in saying that, I think she had a pretty good innings, 96, but it was still sad. Um, so I think that's everything. With um, I'll announce the winners to my prize a bit further on in the podcast. But what I will just mention is I'm aware that not everybody does Facebook and quite a few of you left comments um, on my YouTube comments page with the hashtag Shetland. So I did add all of those into the random draw selection. So you can either use hashtag Shetland in the comments below or hashtag Shetland um, on your post in our community Facebook group and they will all go into the prize um, for the next two mystery packs. I'll show you what they are. So what I've done is I've got um, six balls of Jameson and Smith, which is the two ply jumper in weight yarn, which you can see here behind me. And they are mystery packs. There's one of each ball. Um, of random colours, but you could easily do a colour work um, feral beanie with the colours that I've put together. So I've made up four of those. So two for this drawer and two for the next drawer. Um, I did those to kind of go... Um, I shouldn't do that when it's in plastic. Sort of. So Shetland Wool Week runs from the 24th of September to the 2nd of October. Um, you can download this pattern for free. I will leave the link below. Um, and it does require about six colours, which is what I've put in those prize packs. But I have also made up um, some packs for those five beanies, um, which are on my website. So, yeah, I will just mention everything that I talk about here. I leave the links below, um, any patterns or yarns or podcasts. I leave all the patterns um, in the description box below. So you'll be able to find all the links there. And at the end of this podcast, um, I have an online, an online store, which is unwindandknit.com. But at the end of the podcast, I will also give a shop update about kits that I've put together and new products and what's happening um, in my online store. So that's that mentioned. Okay, I will just quickly now to talk about what I'm wearing because I don't think I'm going to be able to wear it for the whole podcast because I'm starting to get a bit warm. But I had finished this last podcast, um, but I wasn't wearing it. Had I finished it? I think I had. Um, but it's the No Frills Sweater by Petite Knits. That's it there. And I am really, really happy with it. I love the fluff. It's super, super soft. I have worn it a couple of times um, and it doesn't shed or fluff onto any of my other clothes or my furniture. So I'm really happy with that. Um, I love this relaxed neckline. Um, I did everything to pattern, although I did go up half a needle size in the sleeve, um, which I talked about. And that's actually a recommended recommendation from Andrea Maori. She does often refer to the fact that we tend, a lot of us tend to knit tighter in a smaller circumference. So she often recommends to go up half, half a needle size for the sleeves, which I did. And you can see my sleeves are really quite roomy and I love them. It's a wee bit oversized. Let's see if I can stand up and show you a bit. Um, is it there? It's a wee bit oversized, but it's what I wanted. It's it's actually turned out perfect, exactly how I wanted it. I wanted it a bit baggy. I wanted it loose in the sleeves. I think because it's such a warm fabric that there needs to be a little little bit of air. Um, I wore it out last week to meet friends for coffee. And it wasn't a hot day and I actually cooked in it. 
so um, it is really quite a warm garment like I said super fluffy super soft super happy with it the yarn I used was um, I haven't got the ball bands but this is a yarn by a New Zealand dyer called Prosper yarn and it's a blend of merino linen merino and linen and I held that double with this pink mohair which it's upside down <laughs> Um, which I know is available in most local yarn stores. So that's what I held together to produce this beautiful jersey. Um, I did do a German twisted cast on for the neckline, which I'm really happy with. And I did do the cast off, which I have spoke about in my last podcast. And I know from my Facebook community group, a couple of you have used it. So yay, I'm really happy that... Um, that I was able to give a tip that's useful and people have used. Um, but you can see that cast off edge there. It's just a really neat edge. So I do this now on nearly all of my one by one rib. So I do my one by one rib and then the very last row I knit and then I cast off in knit. And it just gives this really nice edge. Um, and it stops the rib from fanning out, which I know rib can often do. It can often fan out a little bit. It just gives it a really nice edge. And I've done that on the waistband as well. Um, so that's what I'm wearing. I would definitely knit this jersey again. And I would definitely recommend it um, for a go-to raglan. Nice, easy, comfortable, oversized jersey. And you wouldn't have to do it in... There goes one of my earbuds. <laughs> you wouldn't have to do it um, with the mohair held together. I think you could do it in a, um, a DK weight. I'm pretty sure, I don't know exactly what the gauge was. Um, I do have it here. 21 stitches. So most DK weight yarns you could, um, you could use for this pattern if you weren't a lover of the mohair. Um, I did... Also, in my last episode, I showed you another petite knits that I had finished. And it was, I think it was called the V-neck slipover. And it was a vest. And I've also worn that a, lot, a few times and I love it. And um, I know a couple of you, my viewers, are knitting it. But I had one message on my YouTube. Um, and the lady said, um, my viewer said, well, Lisa, I can I can see a pattern form in here with your no frill sweater and your petite knits V neck slip over. Why don't you do the Oslo hat to match with your leftover yarn? What a great idea! <laughs> so I jumped on and had a look at it, and I couldn't help myself. I had to buy the pattern, and it's called the Oslo hat by Petite Knits, and there's a mohair version and I think just a normal DK version. So I bought the mohair version. Let's sit there. And I'm gonna use this leftover yarn to knit this um, beanie. It is, it's done on a three mil needle, so it will be quite a tight gauge. And it's done in stock and stitch, and then you fold it back on itself for the brim. And then you just start your decreasing. Now, the reason I thought I would do this is because in November, my husband and I are off to Europe for three weeks, three and a half weeks. And I'll talk about that a bit more later on. But where we're going, it's the beginning of their winter um, and it's very cold. I think they say there's probably a 25% chance in November of it snowing definitely raining and most days is three or four degrees so it's going to be beanie and glove weather it's going to be warm clothes coats thick boots thick socks and this is super warm so I'm going to take this with me and I'm going to knit this beanie um, for my trip over to Europe because I haven't got I've got a few beanies um, but I just think it'd be really nice to be in a mitt a matching set so thank you to the viewer that um, recommended that beanie for me I had heard of the Oslo hat but I wasn't aware that they did a mohair version 
Um, I have also got enough yarn left over in my grey, the black, is it black? Dark grey v-neck vest that I did. So depending on how much knitting time I get, I may do one in that as well. So yeah, there is a bit of a theme happening there, a bit of a, a, a bit of a petite knits um, twin set should we say. <laughs> so thank you for that wee tip. And okay, I'm back. Um, quick wardrobe change. I knew um, that I would get quite warm wearing that sweatshirt, uh, especially in, this is my um, little at home shop and I've got the door closed. So it's quite sort of closed in. So I knew I'd get a bit warm. So I've just thrown on this t-shirt. It says I'd rather be knitting and I like to wear this t-shirt when I'm doing housework and cooking because it says it all. <laughs> it's not what I want to be doing. I'd rather be knitting. Thank you. Um, in my last podcast, I talked about um, the continual urge that I have to cast on new things. And it is a term referred to as cast on itis. And a lot of my viewers come back and said, yes, Lisa, it is a real thing. I also suffer from cast-on-itis. And so I want to thank you because you empowered me to cast on new products. <laughs> Not new products, new garments. So for me, it's if I want to do it, just do it. Like, stop making excuses that, but you've already got three or four whips on the go. You know, you, you sort of try to justify it to yourself, but... It's what makes me happy and no judgment. So anyway, after my last podcast, I think that evening or the next day, I cast on a new project and it was Kavet, 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 um, by Caitlin Hunter. Now, I, this went into my list last year. I, I did want to knit this for last summer, um, but I never got around to it. And I got some yarn that just ye yelled out to me that it would be perfect for this project. So um, in my shop now, I keep um, this range called Yarnadalic by John Arbin Textiles. And it's a sports weight, five ply sports weight yarn, which is what the pattern calls for. And a friend of mine had just knitted a garment in this yarn and it was outstanding. So I just knew that this yarn was meant for this project. Um, the colour I've used is called Soul Drums and the contrast colour is called Confide in Me and that's the contrast colour there. So they're the two colours. And it doesn't show up well there but there's actually hints of blue and almost like a mauve in that colour. It's really outstanding. So I cast on this project and what I wanted to say is I didn't do the cropped version. So in the cropped version, there are two pattern repeats of 14 rows. And Caitlin says, for the cropped version, repeat those 14 rows twice. But for a longer version, you can repeat more times. So I actually repeated them four times because I knew I didn't want crop crop. I knew I wanted it to sit below my jean, um, like my waistline. I didn't want any of my tummy showing. Um, so I did do the standard length version and I couldn't believe it. I thought I was going to play yarn chicken, but I actually did it in two skeins. I have seven grams left. <laughs> So um, I did the size four and I did the standard length, not the crop. So what I'm saying here is that if you are a sort of size three or four or even a size five or six and want to do the crop version, you can get that done in two skeins. If it's a larger size and you want it a bit longer, then you would definitely need the three. But also in the contrast colour, this is 100 grams. I only used about 27 grams, so there's a lot left over. So what I thought I'd do, I will show you my finished object, it's here. But I thought if anybody out there wants to knit this, the cabat, in either this colour, which is sold drums, or any of the, there's 18 colours, 21 colours in this range, or any of the other colours, 
and you want to use this as your contrast color i will wind off 30 grams of this and give it to you um, as a gift so if you want to do that order your two or three skeins and just send me a note telling me that it is for the cravat and i will supply you this contrast color um, at no extra charge because it's a lot of wool to have left over if you haven't got another project for it. Um, I did think there's another summer top of Caitlin Hunter's that I've done called before called the Miss Arena. And I thought I could use it and like get a different base color and use it in another project, um, which I still might do if I've got some left. But if you want to use this as your contrast color, let me know and I'll provide you with 30 grams of that um, free of charge so here it is here's my finished item it it blocked out beautifully as well the reason I'm not wearing it is because it's still damp I only finished it last night weaved in all my ends wet blocked it pinned it out and this morning it's still quite damp so I've got it on a hanger um, but before I wet blocked it, I think with most sort of patterns where there's a bit of lace work and colour work, it was really quite scrunch, scrunched up and the the lace work didn't really pop out. But wow, it blocked out beautifully. So you can really see the lace work there. It's my first time that I've ever done bubbles. My little bubbles there. And then that was a bit time consuming. Down the bottom there's four bubbles. Yeah, and in the colour work, there's bubbles here. You see them there? Yep, so there's bubbles along here, and then there's a row of two rows of two. No, just one row of bubbles along there. Um, so you can really see that that lace work just pops. The other thing I wanted to say is often when we do a jersey like this and there's a bit of color work in the yoke I know that I do it you tend to go for colors that pop you know they'll often say a pop of color you know pick something that's bright or um and that's what I tend to do I'll have my base color and then it's always like yeah, yeah pop of color I'm really glad that I chose a really subtle color on this and the reason I did it is because I was Pretty well trying to copy what Caitlin Hunter's done. So when I started knitting this, I thought this colour's a lot different to anything I would ever normally use, but I am so so happy with the choice because there is so much going on in the rest of the jersey that I think that if this was a bright pink or a bright like a bright pop, I think it would be too much. That's just my opinion. You could definitely go bright if you want to go bright. But for me personally, I'm really glad that I use this really subtle um, contrast colour because it just lets everything else sing. It's I can't wait to wear it. I've tried it on. I'm really happy with the fit. Um, I, did, I did everything to pattern. Um, the short rows at the back... I didn't do wrap and turn, I did German short rows, and that's my normal, I never do wrap and turn, I always just do German short rows. Um, I did do the German twisted cast on, and I think she says just cast on, so you can use whatever cast on you like. I did the German twisted cast on, I did German short rows, and everything else I did exactly to pattern. I cast, it at, I cast off in my normal cast off that I talk about see that there um but like I said so there's one two three four there's four pattern repeats in there the cropped version calls for two and I've done the extra two can't wait to wear this this summer I've got a pair of um linen pants that are this real neutral color and I think it's just going to make a perfect outfit I'll wear that for you on my next podcast because it'll be nice and dry. So, um, and the other thing about this pattern is that 
I mean, I, I've knitted it completely from start to finish and blocked it and sewn in all the ends in 13 days, in less than two weeks. And I think the lace work is, is really repetitive, but it's really easy. And I, I just loved it. I just got into my groove with that lace work and, and it just, I, I just flew off the needles. I really, really enjoyed it. So if you're in the Southern hemisphere, we're, we're now in spring and going into summer. If you want to get um, a summer knit done, highly recommend it really interesting um keeps you engaged all of the time because it's it is just what it is it's just i love it love it love it love it and like i said if you do want to use do it in this yarn um and you want some of this for your contrast color i'm more than happy to wind some off and gift that to you because like i said it really is a nice subtle contrast color um because everything else is so busy it just it just really works really works for me i'm really 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 excited um to be wearing that hmm. that's all i've got to say on that pattern actually that's that's that done that's my finished object i will say i've never knitted bobbles before so that was the first for me and they were really easy. They were a little bit time consuming. So with the bobbles, you knit into one stitch, knit back, knit front, knit back, knit front seven times. And then you pass all those slips. You slip, pass and slip all those six stitches over your first stitch. And that's what creates the bubble. There is a link there for a wee little um, YouTube tutorial. And I did watch that because I did want to get them right. Um, at one stage, when I first started them, I thought, oh God, this is tedious. <laughs> and, and for a minute there, I did think about just leaving them out. Um, but I'm really glad I didn't. And after I'd done probably one round, they come really easy to me and, and, yeah, they were time consuming, but they were easy. So I'm glad I didn't leave them out. It, it did cross my mind. Um, so I think that's all I've got to say on that. I will just give you a quick update on one of my whips. Because um, then that's a segue into something else that I want to talk about. So this whip... I'm going to take this to Auckland with me because it's really nice, easy knitting. But this is um, a Stephen West shawl called Dotted Rays. And I'm doing it in this self-striping, very brightly coloured self-striping yarn with a black contrast. You can see the black there. So between each wedge is the black yarn. And of course, it's a whole series of short rows. So you're creating some pretty big wedges. I'm nearly at the stage where I could cast off for the short version, but I have got two skeins of this yarn. It was out of my stash and I do want to use it up. So I am going to do the long version. And what I have to say about this shawl for a Stephen West shawl, it's really easy. It, it's just a series of short rows and yarn overs to make the eyelets. Um, and if you haven't done a lot of shawls and you've kind of been a little bit scared or intimidated by Stephen West, that's a really good one to start off with. And I'm not sure if I've shown you this, but this is, I am leading into the Stephen West mystery knit along but i thought i'd show you this um i knitted this a couple of years ago Let's get the name right yeah exploration station i'm not sure if he did this as one of his mystery knit alongs but i i didn't do it as a mystery knit along and that's it there it's called exploration station and I've got that out of this um, West Knits, West Knits Best Knits book. 
and the dotted raised pattern is also in this book but you can buy them individually um, off Ravelry so that's my other Stephen West shawl that I've done I did this in Outlaw Yarn which is a local yarn stop store here in Christchurch and I did have some help with this brioche because I'm not very good at brioche and you don't want to look too closely because there are mistakes in that brioche <laughs> um, but I do love this shawl I do wear it quite a lot um, in winter and I actually wear it with a leather um, shawl cuff that I just put there um, and it's just that's how I wear it it just keeps my shoulders um, warm on a cold day normally I'd have a long sleeve top under it um, but I do I do wear this shawl quite a lot and I do like it so yeah moving on um, the Stephen West mystery knit along is in a couple of weeks 6th of October I think um, and I have signed up to it it's my first one and the reason I'm signing up to it is because number one last year I do think I had a little bit of mystery knit along envy when I was watching what everyone else was doing but I did have quite a few of you comments in um, the notes how much fun they had doing it and how much they learned and I really agree with that. I think it's a really good opportunity to learn new techniques. And I think if anyone is going to teach us new techniques, it's Stephen West. And I think even if they're techniques like in this that you may not use a lot moving forward, it does just give you confidence to try new things. Um, and that's why I'm going to do it. I just thought I'd share that with you because number one, I always want to learn new techniques. I think he's an amazing teacher and I think he'll teach us some really good techniques. And also I think it's just fun to be part of something that, seriously, I just think there's like, I, I'm going to go for a push here and say 100,000 people or more are, like from all over the world are doing this. And it's only four weeks. Um, I can't promise that I'm going to get it done in four weeks, but I am going to give it a good go. I have, hmm, I have chose my yarn. That's the hardest thing, right, is choosing your yarn. So the main colour and the contrast colour that I'm doing is Atlantic and Silver. It's these two colours. They're very me, <laughs> blues, greys, blacks. So that's my main and my contrast. And the accent colour, which is the pop of colour, I'm going to use, I'm doing maple. So then my three colours there. And and I just love this colour. It's called maple and it's, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a rust, but it's not a rust rust. It's not a rust like that. It's like a pinky rust. Um, but that's my color combination i've chosen it and i'm committed and i'm going to go with it um and i'm doing that out of nurturing fibers which is a it's actually more of a sports weight than a she does call it a four ply uh sock yeah she does call it like a a fingering weight but the meterage i would say it sits more at about a sports weight um but that suits me. They're my colours. I'm committed and that's what I'm going to go for. I have made up some kits, but I'll talk about those at the end um, in my shop update. So, yeah, that's the mystery knit along. Also, um, just leading me into the next subject, Last year, I did do a few summer knits, um, Caitlin Hunter, but also Isabel Kramer. And the other designer that I really did a lot of last year was um, Anna Johanna or Anna, Anna Johanna. I'm not sure. It's, it's European, so I'm not exactly sure on the pronunciation, but it's spelt. It looks like Anna Johanna, but I think, yeah. Um, and I did do quite a few summer knits, but um, this year I'm really leaning towards Andrea Maori. I have done a couple of 
I don't I haven't done much of her patterns I watch her I watch her on it if I want to Q&A sessions um, but I've actually been really inspired by her this year and I'll show you the patterns that I'm um, that I'm ready to cast on just have a drink I actually went out the other day with my daughter and I kind of felt like I needed retail therapy but I didn't want to spend money that I didn't have but um, one of her favourite shops is um, Trade Aid. And we went into there and I bought this beautiful coffee mug. Look at that. And it's handmade and hand painted in Nepal. And all the proceeds go back to supporting that community in Nepal. So it's made by the Nepalese people. Um, so I really liked that story. And and I love the mug. I actually really love the mug and it's a perfect size for my um, long black coffee. Um, hmm, bit of a story about my mug. Okay, I'm just going to pause while I get my next pile of goodies. Okay, so like I said, I've been quite inspired this season, moving forward into this season by Andrea Mowry. Last year I did her stripes jersey, um, love it, love the top down construction, love the way it fits. Um, I did it in another yarn, but I just thought I'd show you this swatch. So a friend of mine has knitted stripes recently and she's worn it a few times and every time I see her wear it, I'm just like, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. And she did it in these colours. Um, and that's the swatch she did. Now, this is done in the Exmoor sock, um, which is up there. Probably can't see it. Um, but there's quite a few colours in that range. She did this on a 3.5mm needle. I think she might have gone up one or two sizes. She didn't quite get gauge. Um, and the stripes that she did were quite a bit wider than those stripes but that's the color combination she did and it looks outstanding but not only that it um like she said it wears well it's light it's comfortable to wear it doesn't fluff it doesn't pill and it's a really nice um transitional season piece so you sort of need long sleeves but you know it's a bit too warm to wear like my jersey that I had on this morning that was too warm to wear um yeah so I just thought I'd share that with you that was um stripes and that um a wee little swatch that might inspire somebody but I did do that last year and I have shown you this so I'm just gonna touch on this really quickly so this is Andrea's winter beach cardi and I know there's a couple of people over on our community Facebook page that are doing this um and i also knitted this last year in a different yarn but i have cast it cast on and i haven't worked on it for for a few weeks but i have cast on um, a new one myself and i'm doing that in the apple door dk in a color called quench and um i have just restocked all this so i know a couple of people saw mine and liked it but i had sold out of the yarn um but i have restocked that that's it there. Isn't the colour outstanding? Pinks and yellows. So that's my other Andrea Mowry project that is on the go. And last episode, I spoke about the Weekender because I've got this yarn in my stash. So there's the Weekender there. And I bought this yarn a year or two ago, and it's um, Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which is the yarn that Andrea recommends for this pattern. And it cost me a fortune, and I've never knitted it, never cast it on, because I had reservations. But a few of you left me comments that um, inspired me again to think, yeah, no, you're right. So one of my concerns was that there was a lot of pearl in this sweatshirt. But there's no pearl because you're knitting it in the rounds reversed. Um, so I, I thought, well, that's silly. I should have known that. <laughs> I should have read the pattern and known that. So, and the other thing that inspired, inspired me is that I had a lady visit my shop on the same week that I talked about this. And she was wearing this jersey. Um, just by chance, she walked in wearing it. And I loved it. 
I loved the neckline. It had, um, like you can see um, on Andrea's one there. So it's got quite a wide neckline that you can close up if you if you want to, if you don't like it too wide. But I love that wide, wide neckline. And I don't know why I fell out of love with it, but I have actually fallen back in love with it. I've got the yarn, so it's not gonna cost me anything. And I'm gonna cast this on. And because it's, it's a worsted weight, this is gonna be a really quick knit. And do you know the other thing about this yarn? It feels as light as a feather. So although it's worsted weight and it's quite a big oversized jersey, I actually think it's gonna be a really light sweatshirt. Um, and I'm probably speaking to a lot of converted people here that have already done it, right? Because she's also got the Weekend Alight now, which you can do in a finger and weight yarn. Um, but so I want to thank everybody that left me a comment about this um, because you have inspired me to knit it. I am going to cast it on. Um, so thank you. And that's what I just love about this knitting community because you can just put things out there and so many people put it, can put a different spin on it and, and you have all these light bulb moments and it's so exciting. And that's why I love that Facebook community group because that's what you can do. You can put things out there and then you'll get everyone else's spin on it and you just, it's exciting. You get a completely different spin on it. Anyway back to Andrea and it's funny how this turned out so I've just finished my cravat my first time doing bubbles and I was watching Andrea and she's just released a new pattern for I think she calls it her Rhinebeck sweater so every year she releases a sweater for Rhinebeck which is a big wool festival in America and this is the pattern and it's called Sprite and it's this lovely, um, this is a sports weight yarn and it's a yoke, top-down yoke construction and it's got bobbles, which at the moment I'm loving the bobbles and it's got corrugated rib and I've not ever done corrugated rib. So this pattern um, I I'm excited to do because there's something new in it that I haven't done before. I've got this beautiful sports weight yarn to do it in. Um, and it's a nice, uh, it's a bit like stripes. I think it'll be a really nice transitional piece that you can wear, you know, autumn and spring or the cooler summer weather. Um, I will probably do the three quarter sleeves, which I think she has done a shorter sleeve. You could even do this in a short sleeve, I think, but I will do the longer sleeve. Um, and I'm really excited to do that. I've picked my yarn. So I went and had coffee with some of my knitting friends last week and I actually took a cu couple of colour combinations um, so they could help me choose. So um, what I this is um, Yarnadalic, which is a sports weight, and this colour is called Ordinary Joe and it's actually undyed. But you can see there it's... It's not a white white, it's a really nice, natural, almost like a, I'd even say it's got a wee hint of pink. Um, so that's going to be my base colour. And my contrast colour is called Wanderous Place. And it's this beautiful, rusty orange. Love, love, love it. And that is... That's what I'm going to do there. So if any of you want to jump on and do um, what they call the Rhinebeck sweater, I know we're not going into Rhinebeck because we're like a thousand, thousands of miles away. It's literally on the other side of the world. In saying that, I'm going to go one year. I've talked to my husband about this. And I said, I want to go to America one year um, or even Canada, Knit City. And I want to go to one of these big um, knitting yarn festivals. But um, yeah, so if any of you would like to do this with me, the um, Andrea Maori Sprite, um, she does call for sports weight yarn, which we've got 21 colours to choose from. Um, yeah. Come along and knit it with me. 
it was only released last week last week maybe 10 days ago podcasts to podcast for me is about every two weeks and it's amazing what happens in those two weeks it's not long but a lot I seem to do a lot in those two weeks um, but it is a newly released pattern um, and I'm really excited to cast that on so I'm not sure which I'm going to cast on first the weekender or the sprite don't know probably the sprite because I think the weekender I don't, who knows I might cast them both on we don't judge here you cast on 10 things <laughs> whatever makes you happy that's my theory um, and what's good about that weekend is that yarn is actually coming from my stash. It's not yarn that I have to purchase. Um, and I know that you've all got stash. And anyway, still on the Andrea Maori subject. Um, I don't think this is an old pattern, but it's not a new release. And I come across it when I was, you know, down that rav ravelry rabbit hole that we get ourselves into. Um, even fall and once again it's like a crappy tight summer weight three-quarter sleeve open neck my style type of sweatshirt so that's it there even even fall and once again there's new technique in here so the edge around the neckline and the sleeve um Pico, 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 it's a pico edge. So that's a new technique for me that I will learn um, that I haven't done before. And I think that's really important to learn new techniques. And I haven't read too much of the pattern, but it looks like a whole se series of maybe slip stitches um, to get that color work. And so there's three colors. There's your main color, contrast one and contrast two. Um, and the yarn she's used is like a light fingering way. And I've picked some colours that I want to do it in, which are actually really similar to what she's done it in. So the main colour, I've actually chosen this one here called Mizzle, which is a really nice, light, naturally grey colour. Um, this is Exmoor Sock Yarn. It's on my website. It's... I haven't got my glasses on. Corridale, Blue Face, Lester, and Sward Bulls. I can't say that. But anyway, it's a it's a beautiful light fingering weight. It's actually this yarn here. And that's why I'm excited to do it because I know it doesn't peel or fluff, and I know that it has beautiful sort of drape, and so yeah, it's it's this one here. And actually these three colours are in this swatch. Um, so my main colour is Mizzle, and then my contrast one is, I think it's, um, it's contrast one, is Wattleberries, which is this beautiful dark blue. It's got a wee little bit of a fluff on it, um, wee little bit of a halo, but yeah, it's beautiful. And this is one of my favourite colours called Quick Bean. I knitted, I don't know if you can see it, I knitted my um, Pure Joy shawl in those two colours. Um, but anyway, when I saw this pattern, um, I just knew that that would be the perfect yarn for it. So, that's like a real Andrea Maori month ahead of me. Or Between those three casts on and Stephen West... I reckon that's me until Christmas. Serious. And I'll be even lucky then to get them done by Christmas. But I still have my winter beach <laughs> guardy as well. So I don't know what's going to take the back seat there. But um, definitely Sprite is a cast on. I, and I really want to cast on um, the weekender and even fall. Anyway, I might have to flip a coin. Toss a coin. So, um, regardless of which ones I cast on, um, the idea of this is me sharing patterns with you and sharing ideas with you. So hopefully I've inspired somebody to, um, yeah, one or two patterns um, that you might want to look up and maybe I've inspired you to knit one. 
um also on my um facebook community group i had talked about the vest i had recently done the petite knit slip over and what i had said and i stand by is i think i'm now a vest person i've never knitted a vest never worn vests but i'm a bit of a vest convert i think um because i've actually even worn that over a t-shirt I, I'm really enjoying it and one of my lovely viewers posted this in our Facebook group and it's called Alanis by Elizabeth Smith Knits very boxy very open neck and I could see myself wearing this pattern um, the gauge is 19 stitch it's DK and I have one with you it's not the colour that I would use, um, but Apple Door DK um, would be perfect for this vest. It's a little, it's a wee bit rustic. It's got amazing colours, and I would do a darker colour like she's done there, and then do the different colour pocket. I think that's a really nice pop. Um, so. And somebody did say to me that this Elizabeth Smith Knits has some really good patterns and I am yet to um, go down that rabbit hole. I just purchased this one pattern. I, I didn't explore further because that may have been dangerous. Um, but thank you to the viewer that introduced me to this pattern. And um, yeah, maybe I've inspired somebody else to um, have a look at it. But yeah, I, once again, quick knit. It's, I think it's literally just like two squares joined together. And it has, you're not going to be able to see it there, but there's some detail um, down this side. It's just a really interesting pattern. So, <laughs> they're all my patterns. This needs even for. Sorry, I'm just checking my list. I did too, which I, I'm not going to knit because I haven't. I just know that I'm not going to get much sock knitting done. But I did purchase Andrea's um, DRK Everyday Sock Pattern. I thought I'd try it. It's just, I mean, I do use a vanilla sock pattern, um, tarp socks with a different difference and socks on a plane, which are free patterns and they're very basic. Um, but I do like the idea of that one. I think it might be a three by three rib, just a good everyday sock pattern. Um, that's with all that spare time I have to knit. I'll just whip out a pair of socks. <laughs> Not likely. <laughs> anyway, I think I'm going to draw my prize winners, um, for my two Jameson and Smith mystery packs. Um, and... I don't know if I mentioned it before, but what I'm going to do, it was hashtag Shetland and I'm going to leave that same hashtag Shetland go through until my next podcast and I will redraw again. So everybody that's already in that draw will remain in it um, unless you win today and I'll take you out because that might be a little bit too, might be pushing it a little bit too far, but um yeah, so we'll leave it at hashtag Shetland and you can either leave that in the comments below or in our Facebook community group. But, and what I do is I write down all the names and I allocate them a number and then I do a random number generation. Um, so, and that's it. I don't, it's completely 100% of these are the two numbers that came out. And you're not going to believe it, but the first number I come out was actually number one. And that's Mel Morris. So Mel, if you're watching, um, please send me an email or a message. If you go onto my online store, there's a contacts page and you can actually email me through, um, through my website. So that's Mel Morris. And the second winner is Mary Louise... I think it's Nordenberg. I can't read my own writing because I've scribbled them down. Um, so Mary Louise Nordenberg. 
so i'll see if i can private message you through facebook but if not please email me um prize winner and send me your um address details and i will get them in the post to you and they're the first two there like i said they're complete mystery packs and um if you don't know what to do with them if you get the yarn and think okay now i've got these six colors what am i going to do with them um download this it's free it's a free download i have left the link in my last episode but i will leave it in this episode as well we just press on the link and you go to this shetland wool week site and go to the free um you'll see that free knitting pattern come up on the website click on that and it'll give you the link um and i'm pretty sure that these combinations of yarn you'll be able to use in that um, beanie pattern if not i'm sure you've got lots of color work beanie patterns that you can use so that's our prize winners yay and i'm going to do a shop update and i'm quite excited about this because i have got some beautiful new yarn to share with you but if it's not your cup of tea and you're not interested in my shop um i want to say thank you for viewing up until this point um thank you for joining me thank you for subscribing um please subscribe press the like button share it with your friends um and i will see you in a couple of weeks but if you do like to hear what's going on in the world of yarn and my online store i'm going to give you a sh quick shop update um first thing i'm going to show you and there's plastic i'm sorry but I have put together three kits from the Exmoor sock. Now that's that swatch there, the Exmoor sock. And these cost $200. So there's 10 skeins all together and there's $20 each. Um, actually... I'm going to take them out of the plastic and I'll show you the colours just in case you need some inspiration for your Stephen West Mystery Knit Along. Okay, so it's a lot better than rattling plastic. Okay, so the first one, um, and this one I've called Belle Heather. So I've named them according to the accent colour, the pop of colour. So main and contrast colour is Booth which is this beautiful mauve. This colour is called Bibblebug. And then for the pop of colour, we've put in Bell Heather. So that's one kit. And on the website, it's actually called Bell Heather. Okay, so that's for all you purple and mauve lovers. Now this one here I've called Quick Bean. And this is Quick Bean, and that's that beautiful orange rust. And that's the pop of colour that I've put together with Drumble, which is this gold, and Hamel, which is the green. So really nice autumn tones. Fall colours, that's what I'd call them. So that's one of my other kits that I put together. And this one is called Odmibod. Don't ask me what Odmibod is. It's just a word that they've used. And it's this beautiful bright green. It's like a yellow base green. And I've teamed that up with Bouldering Clouds, which is this dark grey. And then this green is called Dimity. You can see those three there. So they're the three kits that I've put together from our Exmoor sock range, if they interest you. Um, the other ones I've put together, I'll get them. <laughs> okay, so we're still on the theme of the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along. 
this is out of nurturing fibers which is a super twist um fingering weight or i actually think it sits more in the sports weight family but anyway so main color we've got i showed you this one before because this is my choice so we've got atlantic silver and maple is the contrast color so there that's that one so just giving you some ideas and you might look at these colors and go well i've got these in my stash i've got something similar in my stash so once again we've got atlantic and silver which is the same two i showed you before but claret is the pop of color which is this beautiful dark wine claret color <laughs> so that's that one there is called claret this one here is called monet so the two main colors are driftwood driftwood espresso and monet is the pop of color i actually really like that i might do this one instead of maple I do like that espresso and um, driftwood. And last but not least, last but not least, once again is um, the espresso and the driftwood, which I showed you before. But the pop of colour is sunlit kelp, which is that yellow, green, yellow. It's kelp. <laughs> so they are some kits that I put together very quickly and also I just wanted to tell you oh no I won't I won't go on about those um bear with me okay so since I saw you last I received my delivery of my whole range of the yarn Adelic yarn and there's 18 colors plus three of the limited edition so it's 21 colors and it's what I, as you know, I've just knitted my cavette in. And I am a serious convert and fan of this yarn. So I just wanted to tell you that it's 100% Falklands Corridale. And it's a breed that's about 100 years old. And it was derived from crossing the Merino with Lincoln Long Wool. Um, so the fibre is, it's got um the softness and the bounce of the merino but it's got the luster and the long staple length from the um from the lincoln long wool so it's a hundred years in the making this yarn of crossbreeding these two shapes to create this beautiful um they say a fiber lover's dream and i've got to say to knit with this was an absolute dream so at the end i'll just show you a quick footage of all 18 or 21 colors um hanging up on my wall there but jump over to the website and have a look because this is um just seriously scrumptious um yeah so i did want to share that with you and the other thing that i received was um so my nurturing fiber super twist socks so this yarn um is dyed and spun it's from south africa um but they have their uh kid silk mohair which is the finest most beautiful soft mohair and i'm loving mohair at the moment as you know from my um petite knit sweater just that the softness and the bounce and the and the fluff it's just beautiful so i've got about 12 of these but i did buy in five of the perfectly matching um mohairs so this one's cherry blossom but i won't go through them all there's a beautiful blue there's the um driftwood which is a really nice brown and then there's the silver one two brown silver blue and a gray yeah but jump onto the website and have a look and um you can match them up perfectly if you want to do a garment or a vest where you hold them hold the two double so that is also what's new in my shop and i just need to check my list 
Oh, yes. Now, I've shown you these before very briefly, but I thought they're worth a mention because, once again, I'm loving the mohair. <laughs> so what I have, and I have about 15 of these um, on my online shop, and it's called Adele's Mohair Kit. Now, these come beautifully boxed in a strong box with a window, so they do make a lovely gift. Now, this one's called Autumn Avenue. And what you get is nine balls of mohair. And then you get one with ribbon, one with speckles, and one that's a chunky. And in this box, there's also a pattern to either do a shawl or a scarf using all 12 of these. Um, so it's beautiful fine silk mohair. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the one that they call boucle. But anyway, so I thought I just would give you a quick, so that was autumn leaves. Um, this one's called Herbs of Province. So what you've got here is some like beautiful greens. But there's, there's black and silver. is mountain lakes which are blues Got those there but like i said there's about 15 and i can't show you all of them there's cappuccino which is your brown earthy tones there's pinks and purples um there's reds like really deep reds um, and what had happened, I had them on my website, but it was pointed out to me recently that the images weren't very good. So last week I actually um, took new photos. So the images on my website now um, show a, a lot more true to life, the actual colour, and it, it shows them up beautifully. So if you're wanting to do some mohair, maybe a bit of a fade, maybe just a shawl or a scarf, jump over and have a look at these. I'll tell you what, so each box contains nine 20 gram balls of mohair, one 20 gram ball of the beaded yarn, a 20 gram ball of the ribbon yarn, and a 30 gram ball of the chunky. I think they're just gorgeous, um, but also make beautiful gifts. And um, I think that's all. Jump over it. Uh, the other thing too, I know I know it's too early, but thinking of the whole Christmas thing, I know for a lot of knitters, you may be in a knit group and um, some knit groups do like Secret Santa and that type of thing. So just a reminder that I have my Knitter's Balm, which is the hand cream, which is suitable to use when you're handling your wool. Um, but also my stitch on hold cables. And I think that they make really neat little gifts if you're wanting to give a knitting friend um, a gift or a secret Santa. And, um, and the other thing that I have that you can go on and have a look at. So I showed you there, there's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So the Shetland will work, there's five beanies. So I have actually put all of those into a kit. Um, so there's colorway one, two, three, four, and five. And so rather than going through and selecting all the colors individually, just select the kit. Um, and it's nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, $54. Yeah, $54 for a kit. Um, and there's five different colorways. So, yeah, you can just buy the kit rather than pull up all the individual balls. And I think that's me done and dusted. I have, um, I'll show you next time, I have tried to do a wee bit of spinning. I really want to do more spinning. I love my spinning wheel and I hate that it just sits there looking at me every day saying, spin, spin, and I'm going, no, I need to knit. <laughs> um, but I do want to get some more spinning done. So, 
Yeah, I've got to say too that as like over here of Southern Hemisphere, we're in our spring and um, I have the privilege of living very close to the city centre. And here in Christchurch, we're, we're called the Garden State. And I was really reminded of that when I went out a couple of days ago, when I went around up through Hagley Park. And I've got to say, Christchurch looks stunning. It's absolutely amazing. So all the daffodils and jonquils are out and the whole avenue is lined with daffodils. And then you go around to the other avenue and it's completely tree lined with blossom, which means there's pollen in the air. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't suffer with hay fever, but there is a lot of pollen in the air. But Christchurch looks outstanding. So if you're visiting or you're from here, get into Hagley Park and have a look. It really looks beautiful. And um, like I said, I'm off to Auckland tomorrow. So I don't know what I'm going to see in Auckland. But um, thank you all for joining me and hanging out with me for the last hour or so. I hope you've taken something away from it, whether it be a pet and idea or a bit of inspiration. But do jump over to our Facebook group and join that. Please remember to fill to just to answer the three questions. Um, I have moderators that look after that and I don't think they'll accept you if you don't answer the questions. <laughs> I'd one of them say, well, I'm really strict on this, Lisa. But um, yeah, jump over there. It's a really nice place to hang out and ask questions and just be part of a, a wee knit group, really. And anyway, that's me done and dusted. Please subscribe. Feel free to leave comments and um, have fun. Stay happy. Stay healthy in this crazy world and I hope you get lots of knitting done and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks for joining me. Bye.